Shannon, how are you? I'm great. This is Shannon Rose of the Rose Hollywood Report. Um, talk a little about your start in, in the industry and your connection to the real world and MTV. Oh, the real world show. It's kind of funny. You know, I, um, how I started was, like a lot of people, oddly enough, my dad and I built an a, uh, AM transmitter in my basement when I was nine, nine and a half, ten. And I did broadcasting from there. But, of course, it didn't have a far reach. It was like about two blocks or so. Then I got it involved in college radio at about 16 at Rutgers. Got my first radio job that was a pay job at an alternative rock station uh, in Asbury Park, New Jersey. And I also, in that period of time, around the time of college, I started DJing in nightclubs. I was DJing four nights a week, packing clubs around Jersey and Central Jersey, uh, up towards New York. And, um, you know, it was, it was pretty crazy times. It was good, though. And what about MTV? How would you get your hookup with them? Well, here's how that started. I mean, I got a reputation for, you know, we were broadcasting, even though we were a real commercial radio station, you know, it was a mom and pop run station. So it was basically broadcast out of a house on the Jersey Shore. Now, artists would come down there and they really, you know, they would go, what the hell are we doing out here in the boondocks? It wasn't really the boondocks, but outside of New York City, if an artist came, they didn't know where they were going because it was a good hour and a half drive. And, uh, you know, people really got into my interview style. People, artists were very impressed and enjoyed doing the interviews because somebody that actually knew about their music. So that's how the reputation got back to MTV. Um, oddly enough, the first thing that I ended up on with MTV was the guy, uh, one of the guys on the first season of Real World ended up, you know, hanging out at the clubs where I DJed at night. And he was like, and he listened to me on the radio and he was, he said to me, he goes, do you think it's cool if my band comes down? We're going to, uh, we're on some new MTV show called The Real World. And I, and of course it hadn't been out yet. So I said, sure, man, come on down, bring the cameras down. Of course, I DJed the night before and partied pretty hard. And I had uh, a shirt on, you know, I was dressed for radio. I mean, the shirt wasn't like disheveled. <laughs> there was probably a stain on it. You know, I hadn't shaved uh, my head or my face really that, that from the night before. Not realizing that that was going to air about a thousand times <laughs> and the phenomenon that the show became. So when I first started working at MTV regularly in the music department, it was so funny because in the hallways, every time it came on, they go, my, you're real world again. And people would yell down the hallway and bust my chops for the not so clean shirt. You know, it was one of just one of those things. I woke up the next morning and was running to do my show at the radio station that I managed. So... Uh, that's how the real world thing took place, and how now, I know, you know. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Shannon. I'm sorry, Matt. Now, how has technology changed the landscape of music? We talk about technology with MTV, the real world technology with TV, but what about uh, the technology with music? Well, it's changed in a lot of ways. Obviously, people find their music differently than they used to. You know, obviously, when I was growing up, you went to record stores, bought records, CDs, cassettes, um, and you know, it's changed the way that people uh, digest music and absorb it, and the way that they socially work with each other. Now, you know, I mean, for me, you know, I'm doing this thing called The Hivecast at MTVHive.com, uh, which is on iTunes. It's a free podcast of me doing interviews and, you know, 120 minutes and, and all those things. But there are so many great sites now and ways to get your music out there, whether it's being a YouTube sensation, like people have been from Justin Bieber filming himself in his bedroom to Gautier's video, which is a really incredibly artistic video that launched out of Australia and ended up being watched 170 million times before his record came out here in America and went to number one. You know, the way people are using technology, it's changing the way everything's going on. So for me, when I was asked if I wanted to be a part of this Skype contest, competition, whatever you like to call it, as a celebrity judge, when I found out it was about bands, I thought, this is great. For, because, you know, obviously the voice and American Idol, duets, these shows are all going to be amazing successes. Things like Glee, which is fictional, but still has people singing. That's the way a lot of people are finding out about music today. But I still feel that there's kind of this excuse me, unrepresented majority of people. There's still a lot of kids out there, like my own children, who are learning instruments and are learning how to play and want to sing and want to perform and want to write their own music. So the exciting thing about this Say Join It With Skype campaign is that it's an opportunity for, these, for people to go somewhere, to get their music out there, because on mainstream television, there hasn't been a show that's launched yet. That's, there was one America's Next Great Band, which I remember they were talking to me about maybe being a judge on, but it, it didn't take hold 
And it, it did. That lasted all of what, one season? It lasted, <laughs> it lasted one season. What was funny is I know that um, I remember, I think uh, Jimmy Iovine or somebody represent, uh, recommended me for the, the, one of the judging seats. And I know that Steve Szilagyi, the guy who booked Dancing with the Stars in American Idol, he was very fond of me, wanted me to do it. He thought it made total sense. And I know that they booked the guy that Fremantle, like I guess, had booked from Australia who did marketing at BMG down there, Dicko Dixon. And I think, you know, there wasn't uh, John Resnick and Sheila were great, but there wasn't really, a, you know, a, another representation of the band thing that was there. And it didn't take hold. I mean, because I think somebody said something funny. They're like, why is an Australian guy judging the next great American band? It should have been yeah. all American hey, judges. You know? hey, now, Matt, what is the most interesting interview you've ever had? Uh, for me, uh, there have been so many of them. You know, you got to remember, I've interviewed, like, you know, you two in their studio in Dublin, you know, looking out at that bog where they shot the Gloria video is a great moment. You know, I've interviewed all the Rolling Stones. I mean, there, there have been so many interviews. I mean, I've done at least a thousand interviews with artists over the years. For me, I, there's something fun about all of them. It's special. I mean, obviously, some people are, are easier. You know, they're, they're, they're more, so, some are socially, more socially inept. Some are really good at doing interviews. But I try to bring something good out of them and, and bring something new to their fans when I do an interview, but also keep it interesting enough, uh, interesting enough for the general public so that they hear a story or something they can relate to. So, you know, there have been a ton, to be honest with you. It's, it's hard to, to narrow it down. And, Matt, lastly, let's get one more plug in here. Talk a little about the concept behind Say It With Skype, yeah. uh, the contest, and how it will benefit musicians. Well, this is fantastic, and I want to say that the celebrity judges are uh, myself, Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy and now Black Cards, Ryan Tedder from One Republic, who, of course, you know, has written like 30 hits for 30 different artists out there and has his own hits, most recently The Good Life uh, from One Republic. You know, we all know our way around the studio. I did A&R Columbia Records. I was vice president of A&R there for rock for five years, from 2001 to 2006. We know our way around the studio, and we've worked with artists and mentoring them. So all you got to do if you're in a band, and it doesn't even have to be a professional video, all you got to do is go to sayitwithskype.com, and what you'll do is click on Get Started, and that'll show you what to do. It'll go to a Facebook app and... Uh, you know what I'm talking about. It, it's just it's it's a great way for people to get their thing up there. And you know what? If you know a band you love, who's been who wants to get their music out there, you take a camera and film them on your flip phone or whatever it takes, and make a video and upload it. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a professional video. We're looking for great song, great performance, and and you know people that can play their instruments. You know, diamond in the rough or a diamond already. I mean, I think it's a great thing. And then what they'll win is that all coveted studio time that's so expensive today. They can go in and make album quality recordings and, like I said, be mentored by me, Ryan, and Pete. Well, so. Matt, thank you for joining me right here on the Rose Hollywood Report. Yeah, thank you, Shannon. I appreciate it. <laughs>